Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revisiting Archive, the channel where we explore the fascinating history of the world. This is the sixth video in our series on Portuguese history, and today we are going to unravel the military coup of 1926, led by General Gomes da Costa, paving the way for the authoritarian Estado Novo regime. Now, let's dive into the history of Portugal, a country that has a rich and diverse past, shaped by many civilizations and cultures. Do you know how it all started? Do you know how a small corner of the Iberian Peninsula became a powerful and influential nation that explored and colonized the world? Do you know how ancient Rome shaped the culture, language, and identity of the Portuguese people? If you are curious about these questions, then you should watch our previous videos where we talked about the Roman conquest, the birth of Lusitania, and the enduring influence of Roman culture in Portugal. The Lusitania War, led by the legendary Viruettes, as they resisted Roman domination and a quest for freedom, the assassination of King Carlos and the ascension of King Manuel II, and the monarchy in turmoil, the 1910 revolution, and how it bullet sparked a republic, and Portugal's role in World War I, and the Portuguese Expeditionary Corps on the Western Front. But today, we are going to focus on a more recent and domestic episode of Portuguese history, that occurred in mid-20th century, when the Portuguese Republic was overthrown and replaced by a military dictatorship that would later evolve into the Estado Novo, the longest lasting authoritarian regime in Western Europe. This episode is known as the 28 May 1926 coup d'etat, or simply the 28 May coup, and it was led by General Manuel Gomes da Costa, a veteran of the First World War and a monarchist sympathizer. The 28 May coup was the result of a long and complex history of political and social unrest that had its roots in the 19th century, when Portugal faced many challenges and changes, such as the loss of its colonial empire, the industrialization and urbanization of its society, the emergence of new ideologies and movements, and the interference of foreign powers. The Portuguese Republic, which had been established in 1910 after the overthrow of the monarchy, was a turbulent and unstable regime that faced many problems and challenges, such as economic and social crises, political and religious conflicts, and military coups. The Republic was also unpopular and discredited, due to its corruption, incompetence, and violence. The Republicans were divided into factions and parties that often clashed and conspired against each other and had little or no support from the people, the army, or the church. The Republican regime also had to deal with the consequences of Portugal's participation in the First World War, which had been costly and controversial and it provoked more discontent and opposition. The war had drained the country's resources and manpower, and had caused many casualties and losses. The war had also exposed the weakness and the isolation of Portugal, which had been pressured and manipulated by its allies, especially Britain, and had gained little or nothing from the peace treaty. The Republican regime also had to face the rise of the new political and social movement, that challenged its legitimacy and authority and demanded more radical and revolutionary changes. These movements included the communists, the socialists, the anarchists, the syndicalists, and the nationalists, who had different agendas and methods, but shared a common dissatisfaction and hostility towards the republic. These movements also had the support and the influence of the international events and trends, such as the Russian Revolution, the Irish Republic of Independence, and the fascist movements in Italy and Germany. The Republican regime also had to cope with the dissatisfaction and resentment of the army, which had been neglected and mistreated by the government and had suffered the hardships and the horrors of the war. The army also had been politicized and radicalized by the involvement of some of its officers and soldiers in the various plots and conspiracies against the Republic, and by the infiltration of some of the secret societies and organizations such as the Carbonaria, the Freemasonry, and the Integralismo Lusitano that opposed the Republic and advocated for a different political system. The 28 May coup was the culmination of all these factors and forces that converged and exploded in a violent and decisive action that put an end to the Republican regime and initiated a new era in Portuguese history. The coup was led by General Manuel Gomes da Costa, who had been one of the commanders of the Portuguese Expeditionary Corps in the First World War and had become a national hero and popular figure. He was also a convinced monarchist, who had consorted with people of various political convictions 
and had been chosen by the right-wing revolutionaries to lead the movement. The coup started on 27 May 1926 in Braga, where Gomez da Costa arrived to launch the revolt with the support of the local military units and the Carbonaria. The coup quickly spread to other cities and regions such as Porto, Lisbon, Coimbra and Santarem, where the rebels met little or no resistance from the loyalist forces or the public opinion. The coup was successful, as the republican government collapsed and the president Bernardino Machado resigned and fled the country. The rebels proclaimed the end of the republic and the beginning of the Dictadura Nacional, or the national dictatorship, a military regime that would rule the country until 1933. The 28 May coup was a historic and symbolic event that marked the end of the Portuguese Republic and the beginning of the Portuguese dictatorship. It was also a reflection of the social and political changes that were taking place in Portugal and in Europe in the mid 20th century when old regimes and orders were challenged and replaced by new ones and when the new ideas and movements emerged and clashed. The 28 May coup also had a profound impact on the history of Portugal and on the fate of the dictatorship the dictatorship was a complex and contradictory regime that had both positive and negative aspects and both short-term and long-term impact. On the one hand, the dictatorship tried to modernize and reform the country by promoting the development of the economy, the infrastructure, the education and the culture. On the other hand, the dictatorship also repressed and oppressed their country by restricting the rights and freedoms of the people, the parties and the press and by imposing a conservative and nationalist ideology that glorified the past and the empire. The dictatorship also had to deal with the challenges and the threats that came from within and from without, such as the opposition and the resistance of the democratic and the anti-fascist forces, the colonial wars and the independence movements in Africa, and the international pressure and the isolation from the democratic and the communist blocs. The dictatorship also had to cope with the changes and the transitions that occurred in its own leadership and structure such as the rise and the fall of its main figures and factions, and the evolution and the transformation of its policies and institutions. The dictatorship lasted for almost a half a century, until it was overthrown by the Carnation Revolution in 1974, a peaceful and popular uprising that restored democracy and freedom in Portugal, and ended the colonial empire and the wars in Africa. The dictatorship was also the longest lasting and the most influential regime in Portuguese history that shaped and affected the culture, the society and the identity of the Portuguese people. That's all for today's video. I hope you learned something new and interesting about the military coup of 1926 and the birth of Estado Novo and General Gomez da Costa. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and as always, keep revisiting the archive.